Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and today we're going to be playing a little bit of Ratatosker. It's been a minute, guys, and Happy New Year for all of you who have uh, just been experiencing the brand new year, and that's everyone who hasn't died in the last day or so. <laughs> oh god, I was sitting here with my girlfriend, and that was uh, unexpected, but... Uh, yeah, all, all my best to those if you guys uh, are experiencing any losses. Uh, very sorry about that. It's not something to be. It's not something to be. Let's start this over again. Hey, welcome welcome back, guys, to another episode of Random Gaming. Way to start off the new year. Um, we're going to be playing a little bit of Rad Tosker, and a lot of people have asked me to play Rad Tosker again. I think I've only done one video, and I, I got 25 kills on him. Now, uh, someone asked me that, you know, I need to carry them this game, so I picked him. After not playing it very much, for several reasons. One, I want to show you guys the new skin, so I feel good about that. Uh, because I had to pick it up to get the Tier 5 Thor skin, so I might as well show it to you. And so here it is. It's pretty cool. Um, it's like a it's like a joke about him being like Fenrir, like unshackled, you know, all the chains around him. It's pretty cool. I mean, I like it so far. Um, and then, basically, let's see, what do I upgrade first on this? You upgrade the dash. I'm doing the dash one. Jesus, 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 help me. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna beat this dude up so badly. Oh, the silence though. That was ridiculous. All right, let me get out of here because I got no boots and I'm very, very slow. Are they chasing me? No, they're not. Oh man, so many potential kills there, but I got none of them, so that's that's not exciting, but we're getting two kills on our team. I feel good about that, guys. Um, as you can see, probably in the last video, if you check that out, I was uh, up snowboarding last few days, and I had a lot of fun, although I did get a little bit of a cough, cold thing going on, so I apologize for not putting some videos out lately as much as I would have liked to. Uh, I just had a little bit of a, of a cold, and I'm just getting back from it, but I've got a lot of really cool things planned, and remember... On January 5th, at about 6 p.m., I'll be going live on stream on twitch.tv slash rain day and uh, doing a pretty big uh, announcement for this upcoming year. I'll be very, very excited about it. The Amir Freeze is going out. The initiation is far away, but we're doing our best to get there. The dash comes through. I do not hit as many people as I would have liked, but I do hit them then with the follow-up. The shock stun comes out, and it takes me out of the fight, doing a little bit too much damage for me to feel safe about that. I just avoid the Thor land, it looks like, and I make my way to safety, although there is a high, high pursuit. Looks like the Thor Hammer looking to try and come out but he definitely stays too late here as the dash is available on my end I go ahead and take him out getting my first kill as the Ratatosker there now they're all pursuing and I'm gonna jump into the air I'm telling my team to attack let's see where they go let's see where they go they're going to die baby that's mine give me that that's what I want baby baby Ooh, baby baby come on shock what you got come on come on come on come on what you want come on what you want and we get out of there <laughs> I do not want that. I don't care what he wants. I don't want that. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. It's good to get back, guys. I played a lot of games today, and I, I've been trying to record a couple of videos, so it's been interesting. I, for those of you guys who don't know my process, it's kind of like when I'm doing a video at this point. It's amazing how many videos I have because it's kind of like catching lightning in a bottle because I'm doing a lot of my recording in the living room of my home. And if you live with a family that is even relatively loud, you can understand what that is like in the living room of your home actually getting a video with silence or with people not being in the background like just walking around and having you guys be like what the heck who's in the background what do you know who's why is there you know all this stuff going on that is uh the constant challenge more so of a challenge than than actually just making the videos or anything like that oh this was not good for me thor could go up in the air and take me out right now but he's not very very good uh, because my dash doesn't reset if I just dash by myself. So uh, it's it's very interesting, but um, it's it's nice to be able to get away sometimes and then, you know, go ahead and have some free space to be able to make the videos and do it. And again, guys, as, uh, you know, the situation changes, um, it's just going to mean more and more videos, more and more, you know, of what I actually want to have happen uh, getting done, which is awesome. It's always a great thing. Now, there's a huge aggression coming out here because he was really low. So they, they're basically throwing all their cards out to try and take us down. Now, the thing is, I got my dash resets here, which is great. I've got another dash reset. Let's go see. We can't kill the Thor. The Isis is back here. I'm not sure if she knows where we are. 
or what's going on. The Chaka is my main target right now. The Sun Wukong is back into the fight. He's aggressing on me. However, I'm hitting him for 45 damage. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm actually going to yell for help. He might have ulted. It looks like he did. He might take me out. He knows where I'm going. But I have avoided him. Oh my god, the baits. Oh my god, the baits. That is insane. I'm going to be grabbing Golden Bow and Frostbound Hammer in this build, guys. For those of you who don't know about Ride of Tosker, this is basically the same build that I used in my video where I went 25 kills. Pretty much used Opal Acorn. And now, Ride of Tosker, let's talk about the god a little bit more, guys, so you guys know a little bit more about kind of where he stands, especially with Smite World Championships coming up. Do you have a chance to see Ride of Tosker in the championships? Like, what can you expect out of this guy in the future? Um, and the, the, and the answer is no, you really can't. Looks like I do a flurry of damage there. I'm actually going to go up into the air because I feel very unsafe here. Um, and I'm actually going to go back into my base because that was just a bad spot for me to be in. But, you know, really, you're not going to see a lot of him. And it's just because he's, he's considered really garbage right now. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he got nerfed a little bit to the ground. He was really, really strong, but before he really touched competitive play um, to a high level of degree to like change the meta, uh, he got nerfed, and what it did was it really put him out of contention. Um, and a lot of these nerfs, you know, a lot of nerfs that happen with people, uh, in my opinion, are, are really like, not cosmetic, but but they're really like a, a community, like the idealized perception of the god gets changed. And so when a god gets nerfed, it's not necessarily that a nerf like really hurts that god. It's more of the fact that people stop giving that god uh, their time to think about it, their time to go ahead and basically uh, strategize about it because they're considering that, that it's, it's basically not in favor public opinion wise. It's, it's an interesting concept and I, I think it takes a little bit more time to to explain than you know just this brief second but you, but I for a quick example pretty much I'll basically say like um, you know you may see some more on her in this tournament right now why would you see that well one of the interesting things about on her and this last this last patch etc etc is that they buffed his spears by like five percent now the thing is that's not a huge that's not going to change like the game you know what I mean that's not going to change much but the fact is, they buffed his spears by 5%, and people are going to be looking at him as a favorable... That's going to be like a favorable change at the end of the day. And so, people kind of gravitate towards who's being changed, and they... they if it's a positive change, they really put their energy into, I think, trying to capitalize on that to be the first to take advantage of it. Um, and I think for people who just see a god not in the right position, and for in that position too long, like Ravon's a great example, who's just not in a good position no matter how many buffs he got his perception was just so bad that no one even thought about trying to put him into a team composition i think part of ravon's like the the, the tragedy of ravon uh is just the fact that he's been in like a really a, a poor community he's had a poor community perception for so long oh oh how did that Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord I did it. I get I went up fast enough. Um, and I think that's just put him in a bad spot. I think people have just stopped trying to really, you know, incorporate him. And I don't even know now if he's going to be, you know, really incorporated. I think he will be now. I think his changes are enough and drastic enough. And they made a big enough deal. But you could just see how bad, you know, he's, he's gone through three or four four buffs and kit changes i mean it's it's pretty incredible the the length that they've gone to make him um competitive nox is a great example as well you know you see nox and she still rarely ever played competitively and so the thing is um you know that's a that's kind of a wow my melee needs some help bro my melee needs some help I need to get out of here. No Ross Knight, please. Oh, thank God I avoided that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get out of this. Oh, yeah, I am. What are they doing? They're just sitting there. All right, I've got my ult up in a second, so I'll be able to do that. But I'm just saying, Nox is a great example of just a god that's basically had too many changes. Um, and be it doesn't even matter how many changes she has anymore. It's really just the fact that people perceived her as a bad character for too long. For too long and it it, 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 it it was a problem all right we do get him thank goodness oh man this could be my demise 
Yep, and it is. Six and one. And then I have Demise. So we're 4v5 now, so it's not really like... Not really like our game yet. Even though we're doing really well. Me and Sol are going off. But the fact that our Bologna left and she was our, you know, kind of... Secondary initiation, really nice peel, I think is going to make this an interesting game. But we'll see. But yeah, it's interesting, guys. I don't know. I definitely have some videos planned to explain my thoughts a little bit more on that. And, you know, how Smite could be a little bit better at doing this. Ooh. That was a good job by that uh, by that shock to stay alive, huh? I do like I do like the effects though. Ooh, give me that. Damn, some Wukong getting away. Freaking Star Wars cool ass skin having monkey piece of poop. Take that, Chalk. I love rain. I'm a squirrel. I live in the forest. I know all about rainy seasons. It's it's wet, but I get by. Otherwise, there would be no, no none of our kind, none of our squirrel kind left. And there are still plenty of squirrels. You see them every day. You walk down the street, and they stare at you, and they want to bite your toes or something, nibbling. That's what squirrels want to do, right? Bite toes? I don't know. Maybe they just want nuts. I don't know a lot about squirrels, as you guys can tell, but I am a little afraid of squirrels and fast-moving things. I do have to tell you that. So we're going to go for some more crits. <clears throat> Let's go rage. Uh, basically, the build for this, guys, is to... Oh, I could have gone maybe Jotun's. I could have gone maybe Jotun's as well. So basically, the build is 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 to accentuate his Opal Acorn, which allows his dashes to have these like three dashes next to a single dash. So basically, um, Ratatasker early on in his in his lifespan could do this like uh, basically at, at no win and just dash like 8,000 times in a row and it was pretty much insane and no one could basically deal with him. Um, I'm very happy that they missed all that. As you can see, I'm dashing so many times. I've got my dash again. I'm hitting all these people. I've got my dash again. I'm hitting all these people. Now, I'm going up into the air. I survived somehow. Life is good. It's a new year. Rata Tosker. <laughs> Let's go. We're 9-1. I'm feeling good about that, guys. Um, <clears throat> but pretty much the, the whole build is he's, he's got these acorns that you can choose from. So if you haven't played Rata Tosker, it's pretty cool. It's like a lot of options. One heals you. One makes your, you know, your acorns that you shoot, you know, with that number three right there, makes them turn into, like, sticky grenades that detonate after two seconds. Um... Uh, one makes his number two like you know go pretty crazy like those uh, those acorns right there slow a little bit um, and then the other one that I'm using right now is really just all about you know affecting his dash and it's, it's pretty powerful um, because his dash has on hit effects which means that if I have frostbound and golden bow that means I'm, I'm critically hitting and slowing everyone that I dash through and that means that that's a huge you know component in a, in a potential team fight now I'm here and I'm in a bad spot because of the fact oh I wasn't able to kill him damn it he's gonna kill me if he's good he's gonna kill me or maybe yeah yeah he's gonna kill me he just went up. It's too bad. I should have used my three. I could have maybe killed him before he did that. Excuse my sniffles. But, um, I've got my ult. Let's see. You know what? No, I can't use it right now. Um, but it, it's really cool. And I think, you know, why Rodotoscar Rata, is so poorly, um, you know, or, or not very, very much played is because I think they nerfed his mobility too much and he doesn't have any. Once his dashes are done, he's kind of like done. You know what I mean? You can't really do too much. His team fight isn't incredible. He's got no like real insane utility or anything like that. Oh, this is a bad spot for me. This is a bad spot for me. I got to get out of here. Thanks to the double dash, I was able to get out. Um, and I think that the fact is that, you know, he just doesn't bring enough to a, to the, to a team in that assassin role. Um, and he's just not high enough priority to really ever get picked. And the other thing is he's got a very simple counter in Fenrir because the thing that is with his dashes is that, you know, it's sometimes really hard to stick with him. He can be kind of a slippery character if played well and not focused. But Fenrir's actually is number three. His Brutalize can actually stay with Ratatasker through that. And so that's why Fenrir is considered a hard counter to Ratatasker. Because basically after Ratatasker dashes, if you hit him with your Brutalize, you're there wherever he is. You're, you're there wherever he is. And that thus, you know, puts him in a bad spot. But he's still got a ton of damage. As you guys can see, it's lagging a little bit here. But, uh, oh wow, it's a lot of lag actually. But we're still getting the damage though. And that Frostbound Hammer is making a big difference. Hopefully we can keep the lag to a minimum for the video. I would love uh, you guys not to be seeing too much lag here. Um, <clears throat> the other reason you'll notice, like, I'm using... Wow, they're really going hard, aren't they? 
really going hard on me, huh? Well, good thing. Let's get a freeze, please. Let's get a freeze, please. Yep, and that's the end of that. Very good, Emir. Ooh, our homie's over there. I'm not sure Soul's going to make it out alive. Uh, the other reason you'll see me use my number two is that actually they follow you to wherever you are. So if you use your number two and you dash through to somebody, um, this is for people who maybe don't have to play Riot Oscar very much. And I don't know why you would or why you would get a lot of advice because he's not very played in the professional scene. So again, hoping to try and help you guys. Pretty much the idea is you throw his number two out and then you dash into somebody and they follow you, right? They follow you and hit him. All of them hit him. And then you can dash back and you've basically done a bunch of damage. Um, and that's kind of the idea with Riot Oscar. Um, you could go like Jotun's and like with a Billy powered route with him so you have his dashes up more often you have his ult up more often you, you know because he does a lot of damage that way but he, he crits pretty hard he hits he hits pretty hard you could definitely sustain in a fight with some auto attacks especially if you're not being focused but again he kind of he kind of buckles under the pressure of being focused and with not enough dashes to maintain his slipperiness I, I think he's just kind of He's falling out of the meta a little bit too much here. But if you grab some buffs, you know, you have that extra speed buff. You just have to give yourself a little bit more mobility. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Apologize about that. And, you know, you pick your time, your moment, your targets really well. Um, and it looks like we've got some stuff going on here. I hope the shock hammer doesn't come out. Wow. I might get the kill. Oh, no. Well, I get this kill, which is cool. And we'll get the... It looks like we'll get the shock kill. And maybe the Thor kill. Nope, Nox gets that one. We might be able to get over there. Nah, I have my ult, I don't want to use it. But as you can see, um, it's really cool with the on-hit effects. And this build was really OP when he first came out because you could apply basically Frosthound, Hammer, Golden Bow to all these people, right? And then get the kill in, in just this miraculous fashion. Um, and apply all of these, like slows and crits to people in an area that would make him really really deadly and i think it's smart that they they nerf that because that would have just been almost uncontrollable to really deal with um you know it's like a you know as like a legitimate professional play you know it's not really a strategy a character that can just dash eight thousand times like that's not really a, a professional strategy that's just like a character that's just flawed so they changed that but again, I don't know if they brought him back in the line. But again, is he really that bad, guys? I mean, the thing is, yes, he's got a bad perception. He's got the perception that he hasn't been, you know, able to, um, you know, be be a be a top contender. But you know, he brings a lot of damage. He does have some decent mobility. And again, is it because more of a perception that he's bad and a perception that he's he's really not up to snuff, right? Uh, or is it really that he's just very very bad? Oh wow, that was poor. He could actually get me now. But again, that chalk scaling, just not great. Bologna following me as well. You know what? Screw this. Let's fight. There we go. Give me that. 14 and 2. Let's go, baby. I love it. Some 14 and 2 rat rat at Oscar, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the thoughts and the conversation. Try to keep it more conversational and some Smite-related topics. Smite World Championship coming up, and I did want to focus on maybe just lending your ears to more of some some internal thoughts I've had about, you know, God discussions and, you know, where the meta is and, and where some characters fit. And let me know if you guys like that. Do you like hearing about where I think the characters fit and why I think they're fitting in that that place right now or how they could fit in the future, maybe what they might change? You know, one of the things I could have uh, incorporated was how I think Ratatoskr might be improved or what I think you know he needs to do or what Smite content uh, you know creators in terms of not us but the people at Smite creating some of the the god balances and stuff like that might need to do to help put Ratatoskr back into the mix or what needs to happen in the community I think Ratatoskr my honest opinion is that Ratatoskr has kind of been given up on um, I think he still has potential I think nobody is wasting their time to try and make a god that is not proven to himself or has not been proven, um, rather than playing gods that are already consistently proven and considered good. I think that is one of the biggest issues with gods that have a, a poor favor in terms of the community. As I go over my build here in these uh, acorns, you guys can see what this is. But I think it's just really, you know, people thinking about things in a certain way. I think it makes it uh, it makes it very very hard to overcome some of that group think like this god is bad. It, it makes it very hard sometimes unless you're really proven on a big stage that this god can do something amazing. And so maybe someone pulls out an amazing Rana Tosker. Who knows? I mean, I'm looking forward to somebody pulling out something unique. But again, as a professional player, maybe you're in college, maybe you're working another job. This is a side thing that you want to make uh, a pro. You know, something that could be your future. Are you going to spend? 
eight hours a day, out of your eight hours, six hours working on a god that's rarely ever played and considered bad to try and come up with some trump card strategy that might throw a lot of people off and show a god's true potential when you've got four, five, six, seven gods you know are good, you know will work, you know are safe picks, and that you could be practicing and just becoming better and better at those gods with. And I think that's really more of the reason why Ravans and, and Noxes and, and Rodotoskers don't get played. It's because you can't put that energy in. You cannot waste, you know, potentially waste your time. It's just not a safe bet. But I think the people who do do it and eventually do it really help gods to come back into the meta and really make for, I think, some of the most entertaining smite content that you can have. And I think Rodotosker is that god that if someone really put that time and energy into, maybe developed a team comp around, I think he could really actually do some decent things. But again, I think his dash right now is just really what limits, what's, what limits him. It really, you know, kind of demands... Um, I mean, some looking at, and really, nobody has really seen a lot of viable builds for other acorns. I mean, Sapphire really is the only other one, and that's where the, the, the acorns detonate. And I don't think a lot of people have seen, really, um, Emerald or uh, the yellow one, Topaz, have any real effect in the game. So, I don't know. I think maybe some tweaks to his acorns would be actually a, a way for Ratatoskr to maybe jump up into people's minds again, and then start getting played by pros more, and then start, you know, trickling down into the highly competitive and then casual scene uh, to see a little bit more of this guy. So for those of you who've been asking for a Rodotosker build for like eight years, here it is. Here's another video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I seem to get a lot of kills with him. I, I love it. Thank you guys for uh, requesting. And of course, if you have any more requests, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get a video out tomorrow. But again, as you guys can tell, I'm not feeling very great. So I hope to do my best to get a good video out for you guys. But stay tuned for Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. PST on twitch.tv slash rainday. Big announcement for 2016. I hope to see you guys all there. Thanks so much for watching. As always, my name is Rainday. Never give up. Never stop gaming. And I'll see you guys next time.